Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Navy News Update. It's Friday, February 5th, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for today from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. Montana Secretary of State Linda McCulloch announced the five new satellite election offices are set to open on tribal lands across Montana in advance of this year's elections. The satellite offices are a result of a directive issued last fall by McCulloch, the state's chief election officer, to comply with the 2014 settlement over a federal lawsuit brought by Native Americans two years prior under the Federal Voting Rights Act. The lawsuit asserted that the remote locations of some reservations presented undue burden on Native Americans because of the distance needed to travel to the nearest ballot box. Two of those five offices will open in Bighorn County and one in each of Roosevelt, Glacier, and Rosebud counties. McCulloch said six other counties are currently in talks with tribal governments to open additional offices. The satellite offices will allow easy to voting not only on election day, but also during the 30-day early voting period. Under the arrangement, tribes provide office space and basic electric services, such as phone and internet, while counties provide staff and other resources. The United National Indian Tribal Youth was selected as the 2015 Nonprofit of the Year for their outstanding work with Native youth throughout the country by the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Arizona. In other news, Executive Director Mary Kim Titla of Unity brought a few members to Phoenix, Arizona to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the organization on January 19th. Yvonne Chuteau, a former principal dancer of the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, who emerged as one of the celebrated group of dancers known as the American Indian Ballerinas of Oklahoma, passed away at her home in Oklahoma City. She was 86 years young. Ms. Chuteau was one of five prominent Native American dancers who were raised in Oklahoma. The others were Rosella Hightower, Mosaline Larkin, Maria Tallchief, and her sister Marjorie Tallchief, who was the last survivor. The women were sometimes called the state's five moons, which became the title of a set of bronze sculptures by Monte England and Gary Hansen that was installed on the lawn of the Tulsa Historical Society. They are also depicted in a mural by Mike Larson that hangs in the rotunda of the Oklahoma State Capitol. Shelley Lowell, the executive director of the Harvard University Native American Program and a leading advocate for Native Americans in higher education, has been confirmed by the United States Senate and appointed by President Obama to join the National Council on the Humanities. Lowell is one of three scholars selected to join the council, which consists of 26 distinguished citizens who meet three times a year in Washington, D.C. to make recommendations on grant applications, and advised the chairman of the National Endowment of the Humanities. An enrolled member of the Navajo Nation, Lowe grew up on the Navajo Reservation in Ganado, Arizona. A one-of-a-kind program in Central Michigan University is helping Native American students graduate high school and go on to college. According to David Kinney, professor of sociology at CMU and the founder of Nij Kaywin Mentoring Program, Native American students have the lowest high school graduation and college graduation rates of an ethnic or racial group in the nation. In partnership with the Saginaw Chippewa Tribe, the program pairs Native American students at CMU with 5th through 8th grade Saginaw Chippewa students. Since 2013, the program has grown from 10 students at one school to 55 at five different schools across central Michigan. In the coming years, Kinney would like to see the program grow to include other schools and tribes in Michigan and beyond. Nish Kaywin, interpreted as the one that I walk on my path with, is the only program in the nation in which Native American college students mentor Native American youth through a variety of cultural, educational, and recreational activities. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.